Fall overtaking the United States as the tropics take a break. Welcome in, folks. Great to see you on this wonderful and beautiful Thursday. Hopefully we're having an all right day out there. And uh, yeah, the tropics kind of backing off. And we talked about that uh, a couple of days ago. I told you, you know, we were going to get in a little bit of a lull here through the end of the month. And honestly, probably through at least the first week of September as well. Not looking overly active but meanwhile, we are seeing uh, signs of life in terms of fall weather over the United States, and what a perfect time for it. We've got college football today all the way through uh, early next week. We've got uh, the end of the month. We've got the new Starbucks fall menu dropping. It is a beautiful time in the neighborhood. Honestly, one of my favorite times of the year as we start getting the ball rolling here on the fall months, and we'll be breaking down that forecast for you in today's video. Now, if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Gerald. I'm a meteorologist at WCCB Charlotte. If you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe, and hit the bell for the latest notification so you're always up to date uh, with these uh, latest model runs. And trust me, hurricane season will come back. We're not done yet, uh, but uh, we will enjoy the break while we have it and because of that, these videos are probably going to be a little bit shorter for at least the time being. Let's dive right on into it, folks. You can see next to me looping is our European model, and it is blueberry picking season. In fact, probably a little bit after blueberry picking season, depending on where you're at. But uh, the map's got plenty of blueberries is what I mean by that. And they are shooting on down south and bringing plenty of fall-like air and reinforcing shots of that fall-like air. Now, we're going to have, you know, times in between these pockets of nicer uh, weather that start to feel a little bit more like summer. But again, it's August, now almost September. But still, this is the time of the year that you would expect at least some summer-like weather. Take a look at satellite imagery out there. It's um, <clears throat> getting a little more active. We do have a pocket of uh, showers and storms, a bit of an upper level system riding around this big ridge we have. In fact, let me draw out where the jet stream is right now. This is kind of where our jet stream is. Uh, and blue might not have been the best color to pick, but you get the point. And we've got this little piece of energy kind of riding on and around it down to the south, shooting off some showers and storms, and maybe even a little bit of severe weather today down towards Oklahoma and Arkansas. But up north, we've got another shot of, uh, you know, almost an Arctic air mass, I'll call it. Now, remember, an Arctic air mass in the month of August and September is not the same as February. So uh, this is air coming from the Arctic, yes, but the Arctic's a lot warmer right now than it would be uh, other times of the year. But you can see that beginnings of that up here to the north starting to think about driving itself on down to the south. And now that's satellite imagery. What about current conditions out there? Oh, let's see if uh, the current conditions want to load. Oh, there we go. They're starting to think about it. Oh, what's been up with my internet recently, by the way? But it, it has not been happy with me. So if there's any you know glitches in the maps or anything, I apologize. But uh, here we go with those current conditions. Yeah, there's that rain associated with all those upper level um, clouds I showed you. And we are seeing some flooding, unfortunately. Some training of these thunderstorms all the way down from Jackson, Mississippi, up through portions of Oklahoma and all the green boxes. Yeah, those are flood warnings. So take it easy out there as that system works on through. Also seeing some rain start to work on up into the northern tier of the country as that next shot of cooler reinforcing and drier air starts to work on in. Well, that's a look at current conditions. Let's go ahead and simulate this out in the time and show you where it's going and how long it's gonna last and then give you an update on the tropics. We've got a busy couple of days ahead. Remember those college athletics and other uh, fall-like events, or at least, again, start of fall, end of summer events that you might have going on. Well, let's give you a look at radar imagery. This is this afternoon. Still going to be dealing with this pesky area of uh, shower and storm activity over portions of the Ozarks and all the way back down towards Mississippi. Uh, yeah, definitely bringing some rain and some active weather. Same time that's happening, a lighter rainfall, but still some rain up into the St. Lawrence River Valley of Canada and uh, starting to work on into the northeastern United States. Let's time it out for you, and uh, you can see by this evening, this is overnight, and we'll call it the evening, it's about 9 p.m. Eastern time, remember the time above my head, I know it's in small print, but uh, trust me, it's there. Uh, we've got uh, that system up in the northeast, now finally starting to work on into places like the Finger Lakes, Buffalo, Erie, uh, even up into northern Ohio, raining pretty good, and don't rule out a little bit of severe weather with that storm in its down south uh, towards Arkansas and northern Louisiana, and uh, other than that, most of us are relatively dry now, it's a couple stray showers or storms, but those are the only two uh, real, you know, synoptic level features and some I would even say are mesoscale features that are actually bringing any sort of activity. Here we go. Waking up tomorrow morning, we've got low pressure up into the northeast, uh, starting to again funnel in a new area of high pressure. Here it is. That's again going to clear us out. But because the low pressure is there, we will see some showers into New England tomorrow morning. Also going to continue to see heavy rain down south uh, into Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama. We've got some Thursday night and Friday night games here. 
here for uh, football, especially Friday Night Lights, high school football could impact some games down into the deep south uh, in those states I just mentioned. Now, by Friday afternoon, uh, still raining up into New England, especially up into Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, and, uh, you know, I was about to name every state, but basically every state in New England, <laughs> seeing some of that rain there on your Friday afternoon and evening. And then the Gulf Coast regions from, we'll call it Houston, all the way over to Jacksonville, although Jacksonville, not on the Gulf Coast, close enough, right? Uh, Going to see some of that shower and storm activity. Got a lot of viewers in the Carolinas. I think Friday looking good. We've got the Dukes Mayo Bowl in Charlotte. Go Niners. Cannot wait to watch all the App State fans cry on their way out. Um, Joking partially, Um, but uh, that'll be that'll be a good time there in Charlotte. Weather looks great. Nice uh, breeze out of the north, likely. And, uh, you know, going to be a little bit warmer than the past couple of days. But by the time kickoff, it's going to be nice. Bring the shorts, bring a T-shirt, maybe even a windbreaker if you want. Might not be a bad idea. Keep it on going ahead into time and uh, you can see. We actually do get some ring of fire going, but kind of the opposite from what we've seen. Uh, We've got uh, big surface high pressure, not uh, mid-level ridging or high pressure. And along the outer edge of that, we are getting some showers and storms out into the western plains and then down through the gulf, but starting to clear out everywhere else here by the time we keep on going on into time and check it out this coming Saturday morning, college game day getting going. And uh, we will need to watch for some rain down in the coastal sections of Georgia, the Carolinas, Florida. Uh, but, uh, you know, much of the Midwest, Big Ten football looking dry. Uh, ACC football should hopefully be mostly dry, but some places, again, watch out for that Florida game. Uh, I believe that's Saturday, Alabama at uh, Florida State, at least. And uh, then the Clemson game, you know, maybe it could be seeing some rain, but I don't think it'll be anything too crazy. And uh, Ohio River Valley and uh, up in the Northeast, mostly speaking, looking good for the start of the weekend. Now, let's go even further ahead in a time, take a look at next week and show you, yeah, this fall year is not going anywhere. Here is that beautiful dry air starting to work on in, and we've already had a nice dry air mass. Uh, You'll notice some of those dew points trying to creep back up into the deep south, but by the time we get right here, this is into Sunday afternoon. Uh, Yeah, we've got some of that uh, humidity values trying to work back in, but look at what happens next week. Another big shot of fall air. That's that second really big blueberry saw on the beginning map. This would be, uh, you know, later on next week, now seven to ten days from now, but this shot looks even better than the one we just had, and even between now and then, yeah, we've got some some rising humidity values, uh, but still nothing that's, you know, overly, overly bad for late August and early September standards. So that looks good. Temperatures also look like they're going to remain below average mostly. This is through the weekend. A lot of blue in the east, some red back up into Canada and out towards the west coast, and it stays that way. You know, kind of the same pattern. And look at this next shot of blue, folks. I mean, you talk about below average temperatures. This is next Thursday. Uh, The European model going for 20 to 25 degrees below what we should be this time of year. It's like a little sounding in Minneapolis and just get an idea of what kind of temperatures these would be. Highs in the 50s next week for places like Minneapolis is what uh, the European European model is projecting at least. Now, obviously, we've got time to get there. We'll see how it changes. But oh boy, oh boy, that's a real life fall air mass. That's not the fake stuff. That's actual sweater weather with, uh, you know, pants and everything. So, you know, you can see that that looks to be a big feature on a lot of our models. Is this going to bring any rain? Well, that's another great question to ask. And we already talked about the near term. So we'll skip ahead here and uh, I'm going to do a little refresh on the page. It's running a little bit slow. There we go. All right. So we've got that, that little southern slider system here. We go by Saturday afternoon. This is kind of where we picked off uh, or left off and you can see we've got uh, some rain yeah down into the Florida Panhandle southern Georgia I'm hopeful that the Clemson game can stay dry here Uh, you can see if we go by the time Clemson kicks off still looks pretty dry on the model I think it's really I-20 southbound gonna have the heaviest of the rain concerns there for your Saturday your Sunday afternoon rain could try to work back up for some of us here into the southeast Um, but uh, most of the country looking pretty dry here for the weekend next week here comes that next system And boy, oh boy, you know what I like to see? Look at this little blue circle. It might be hard to see. It might be hard to pick out. But you see this right here, that little blue? That is the 540 line. And if you're not uh, familiar with the 540 line, well, you're going to hear plenty about it this winter. That's a big um, kind of indication of where we could see snow falling. In fact, uh, this is Wednesday evening. We've got some precipitation under the 540 line. So, yeah, look at that. 40 degrees in rain in Minnesota. That's not far from snow. We'll see. You know, that'd be a little bit of a stretch for September 4th. But either way, it goes to show you that this is going to be a real life uh, fall air mass that works in by next week, according to plenty of our models. 
And uh, you know what else they say? They say it's not going anywhere. Eight to 14 days out. Climate Prediction Center's got plenty of blue indicating higher likelihood of below average temperatures. And then you ask some red with pockets of uh, warmer temperatures. And then precipitation wise, uh, you know, nowhere overly swinging one way, but some places on the uh, closer side that we could see above average precipitation. So that's your forecast for back home. Let's take a quick look at the tropics and then, yeah, short and sweet today, but uh, we'll let you go after that. NHC map, uh, not overly exciting uh, for non, you know, post-tropical now. It doesn't matter. He's going on out of here anyway. We do have a new little area to watch, though, with the 20% chance of development. I'll be honest, folks, it's got a chance, but I really don't see any anything of noteworthy uh, activity, we'll say, in, in the Atlantic for at least the next seven days. Probably, honestly, the next seven to 14 days looking pretty quiet out here. Um, and one of the reasons for that is the MJO phase. Basically, we've just got an unfavorable background environment. Now, we had a favorable uh, background environment right when we had Aaron and that little flare up. And the MJO can generally do a pretty good job of predicting when things are going to get active. And it shows, yeah, not until at least probably the middle of September, maybe the second week as early as then. But now through the first week, I don't see anything major. Now, does that mean something couldn't form? No, I mean, this area could form, you know, it could try to do something. I just don't see any big time storms uh, and nothing, especially with its eyes set on the United States over the next 10 days. Uh, speaking of the next 10 days, let's show you this. If I can click the right button, there we go. Uh, European ensemble members for the next 10 days. And yeah, I mean, this is what they've got. One little area out here. That's the area you saw there on the map. And none of them are particularly strong. Nothing is particularly close to the United States. A couple members try to get something homegrown. I'm not really, you know, overly excited about that either, <laughs> given the data and the GFS ensembles even more pitiful than the European. Uh, so, you know, the Atlantic looks to be put on pause for now. I don't see anything uh, of noteworthy activity over the next 10 days, like I said. Now, as we go further out into time, here's week three on the map. And you can see this is September 10th through 16th. The National Hurricane Center, should they, uh, should say the Climate Prediction Center, rather, is highlighting that the main development region tries to get back going again, even a little bit of an area here into the Caribbean and Gulf. Um, so I think, again, it's that um, closer to middle of September time frame that we're likely going to hit the ground running again with those big tropical updates. But for now, not much going on back home besides about as good as it gets weather and uh, not much going on in the tropics. So we'll take it a beautiful end to August. And yeah, I know the video is shorter because of it, but um, I'll be honest with you, I am exhausted. I've had quite the week <laughs> at school. So uh, almost done, though. Football coming. Got the, the Charlotte game tomorrow. So working for the weekend, as they say. Right. All right. Y'all have a great one. Stay safe and I'll see you all next time.